Hey, I'm Matt Stoller, author of Monopoly Focus Newsletter Big and an antitrust policy analyst. Now, I have a great segment for you today on this big breakdown. It's about Wall Street, and it's a story you probably haven't heard about. Now, you're going to notice a theme in these segments, which is that I think that the basic problem with the American economy, actually with American society in general, is that most of our institutions are dedicated to cheating people. And this story is right on point. Okay, so you remember the Wells Fargo fake account scandal in 2016? The giant bank, it set unrealistic sales goals for its employees to acquire customers, so their employees just lied and started opening up fake accounts for people who didn't want them. It led to fees, it irritated millions of customers. It was a huge deal when it was uncovered. There were congressional hearings, widespread media coverage, and regulatory crackdowns. Two million fake accounts secretly created, 5,300 employees fired, Wells Fargo fined $185 million. Now, so, so that was just kind of one of many reports on it at the time. I want to bring you back to the, the halcyon days of 2016 so you can see what it was like. Uh, but okay, so what happened? So the CEO of Wells Fargo resigned during this scandal. A few years later, another Wells Fargo CEO resigned, CEO resigned over the same scandal. The bank has paid around $3 billion in total fines and settlements. The whole thing was so embarrassing that the Federal Reserve, which is not known for being tough on banks, placed a quote-unquote growth cap on Wells Fargo, saying that it's not allowed to hold more than $1.95 uh, trillion in assets. Now, believe it or not, that's actually a penalty, and the bankers were extremely unhappy about it. The Fed you know, impacted their bonuses and all the rest of it, and the Fed was actually being somewhat stern. Okay. Now, you might think that would be that. Okay, problem solved. But one of the little noticed consequences of that scandal is that the powerful and highly secretive bank regulator, it's called the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, formed during the Civil War, uh, it was then run by a man named Tom Curry, and he ordered an industry-wide review of bank account openings. That review ended in 2017, and it found that, surprise, surprise, it wasn't just Wells Fargo. Other banks had aggressive sales cultures and were doing these kinds of things too. But you probably haven't heard this. Why not? Well, Donald Trump got elected and he appointed a man named Keith Nureka, here's what this guy looks like, to run the powerful bank regulator, the OCC, Office of Comptroller of the Currency. It's the one that I mentioned before. It's an important regulator and they hide in the shadows. So I wanna make sure that you know who they are so that they feel some accountability. Okay. Nureka did not make the findings public. And last week, the Capital Forum, which is an influential newsletter that focuses on fraud and mergers, reported that one of the banks that had a similar scandal as Wells Fargo is TD Bank. Employees at TD Bank were opening up accounts that customers didn't want in order to hit overly aggressive sales targets, particularly for overdraft protection, but for other things too. Now, this is big money, or at least it was, was big money for TD Bank. So according to the FDIC, which is another bank regulator, in one quarter in 2016, 35% of TD Bank's non-interest income came from these kinds of consumer charges. And that is by far the highest percentage among big banks. This was a driver of profits and bonuses for TD Bank and its executives. Okay, so according to the Capital Forum, TD Bank established, quote, high pressure incentive programs that encouraged sales above all else. It was a point system. If you get someone to open an account or cross sell them other products like overdraft protection, overdraft protections, you get points. But it wasn't like you open a, an account and, and there we go, that's fine. That, that account only had to be open for 90 days. So if somebody closed that account, right, and then opened a new one, you got more points. Points led to bonuses, and if you didn't get enough points, sometimes you got fired. Not surprisingly, employees would do things like mislead customers about the costs and benefits of overdraft protection. Or if you reported a missing debit card or a debit card that didn't work, bank employees would encourage you to close the account and open a new one instead of just replacing the missing card. Call center workers who fielded customer complaints also had to sell services, and they would sometimes finish paperwork for a new account or service, even if a customer didn't give consent. Sometimes they just open up a new account even if the person who called didn't want it and declined. You want to be ethical, said one employee, but you have to reach your goals. Managers have the same pressure. They don't ask question if you're reaching your goal. Okay, and of course, the bank made it incredibly easy to open new accounts. Easier, in fact, than if you had an account and you were cashing a check. 
So this scandal has all the hallmarks of what Wells Fargo was caught doing. I mean, it's a little bit different, but it's basically similar. It's basically the same thing. So why are we only now finding about this at this point in 2022, even though, you know, regulators knew about it in 2017? Well, Nareka chose not to make TD Bank's problems public. He didn't even find the bank. Instead, he issued a private reprimand known as a matter requiring attention, asking TD Bank, asking TD Bank to make sure it wasn't cheating customers. Now, to call this a corrupt parking ticket would be to insult corrupt parking tickets. And just to give you a little bit of a, of a sense, um, the OCC considers banks their clients, right? Even though they're the bank regulator. So in, a, in 2020, and th th this is not the first time that TD Bank has been caught for something like this. In 2020, in a separate scandal, TD Bank paid $120 million to settle charges of cheating customers over overdraft protection, the same sort of a, the, the same product line. So there are so many outrageous things about this scandal. For instance, at this very moment, TD Bank is actually trying to get bigger. They're trying to buy First Horizon, a $90 billion bank headquarters in Tennessee and spread across the Southeast. That's right, TD Bank wants to become more powerful and control more customers. But the worst part is, TD Bank, according to the Capital Forum, is still pushing customers into products they don't need. That's right, the bad incentives are still apparently in place. It also looks like this scandal isn't isolated to TD Bank. In 2020, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and this is under Trump, right, sued Fifth Third Bank for engaging in this same activity, right? So if it happened under Trump, and, and Trump, one, Trump did things, some things that were good, some things that were bad, but he did not like consumer protection. So if you got sued in 2020 under Trump, that was really bad. Now, of course, TD Bank denied all of it, as most banks, you know, they, have, they, they are wary of being the next Wells Fargo. They don't want to apologize. They don't want to admit fault. They just deny, deny, deny until they're under oath. Um, but what happened to Noreko, who was the bank regulator, who covered all this up? Well, he returned to his law firm, Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett, which is kind of a comically named law firm that, I mean, you can imagine all the evil things that that law firm probably did if it was in the 19th century. Well, let's look at his work highlights on his firm's website. Okay, so, so we've highlighted that. Yes, he is bragging that he helped TD Bank, which he regulated, do a major merger deal with Charles Schwab. And his law firm, actually represents TD Bank in its attempted acquisition of First Horizon. But with this scandal in the open, there could be a bit of trouble for TD Bank. At the very least, TD Bank will probably have some trouble getting some, its merger approved by the Federal Reserve and the OCC. Now, the OCC is run by a cautious bureaucrat named Michael Su, who can be scared into pressure by public scrutiny. I don't like Sue. I don't think much of him, and we shouldn't expect that much, but he is kind of a coward. So if, if this gets exposed, he will be, he probably will do something. Um, but more importantly, I expect that other regulators, the fierce head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau under Biden is a guy named Rohit Chopra. He might step in and members of Congress could get interested in the scandal as well. Now, I don't like getting partisan, and I'm not gonna get partisan most of the time in these segments. But in this case, the scandal really does belong to the Republican Party for two reasons. Now, okay, first, I am no fan of how Obama handled the banks, to say the least. I worked in Congress during the crisis. It was a disaster. I am on record on this. You can, if you follow my work, it is was really, really bad. But it was Obama's comptroller of the currency who ordered the investigation of fake accounts across the industry. And it was also Trump's office of the comptroller of the currency who covered it up. Also, Biden was trying to put a really tough bank regulator at the OCC. This is one of the good things he was trying to do. Her name is Saleh Omarova, but she was blocked by Republicans in the Senate at the behest of the banking industry. Of course, there were a couple of Democrats that participated in that, but it was largely the Republican Party that blocked her. Now, I'm sympathetic to the notion that conservatives are rethinking their views of corporate power. I love a lot of the antitrust stuff. I like some of the things that they're trying to do in, in other areas. But so far, they still do whatever the banking industry asks them to do when it really matters. Still, regardless of partisanship, there is a broader problem here. The fact that these kinds of annoying, deceptive practices are semi-routine across the banking industry uh, or at least still happening years after we saw a huge scandal with Wells Fargo. And the fact that regulators knew for years that TD Bank was doing this really speaks to the erosion of the rule of law in America since the financial crisis of 2008. To the powerful, laws really are 
just suggestions. So we can see lots of scandals, we see lots of problems right now, everything from a baby formula shortage to a crypto crash. But all of them come down to the same thing, which is that the American economy, American society, is based on the idea that most of our institutions are dedicated to cheating people. And that is no way to run a democracy. Thanks for watching this big breakdown on the Breaking Points channel. If you'd like to know more about big business and how our economy really works, you can sign up below for my market power Focus newsletter, Big. It's in the description. It's really good. I highly recommend it. Have a good one. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.